Well, hey everyone, Joelle here with Living With Rob. In today's video, we are going to be talking about a cost-efficient way to increase the circulation in your RV. So let's get into this. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Robert Anthony. Uh, thank you to my lovely wife, the Italian princess, Joelle Anthony, for that brilliant introduction. If you have an RV, uh, you probably are, are well familiar with the fact that the little tiny vent fans that they put in uh, as a factory install are typically inadequate, uh, they use a lot of energy, and they're, they're just inefficient. So in our uh, Range Runner that uh, we did, and I'll, I'll put a link to that video here uh, so that you can see the modifications that we did on our little tiny square drop camper that we modified and then sold, we installed Max Air Fans. Now Max Air Fans, if you're part of the RV community and the... Uh, the van life community, you know those are great for increasing air circulation flow. That's one thing that I learned. Well, I've got this Winnebago uh, 2108DS that we purchased, and it has two vent hoods or two vents in there with just your standard bath fans. And I don't think that those are adequate. So if you're not aware, what I'm going to do is show you that you can purchase a very inexpensive insert, which is here. This goes right in place of the entire setup. I'm going to install that for you today, and we're going to be doing the Vortex 2. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description below. These inserts are available all over the place, and they fluctuate in price. I already put one in here. Didn't make a video for it. And that one there um, cost me, I think, $80. This one cost me $100. Um, but we're going to go in and install that, and I want to show you how we're going to do that, how easy it is, and how you can save a few bucks while increasing your airflow, hopefully to not have to use your air conditioner. So let's go into the camper. So here you can see, this is the uh, first fan that I purchased. And that, you can see, went right in here. And in the Winnebago 2108 DS FLX, that is one spot that there's a fan. Now they put them really close together. The second one is back here in the bathroom. And you can see it's a little tiny standard $12 fan. Now, Joelle wanted a bigger fan in the bathroom for when she uses the toilet. Right. Is that correct? Absolutely. Now my view is um, these fans do an outstanding job of moving air and so much so that I thought that it would be great uh, while I wasn't going to install this second one in here I thought that it would be great to add a second one to help increase the airflow up by our bed at night so we're gonna do that so you're gonna need some kind of wire cutter and a crimper you're gonna need a standard square head bit which is very common in your RV and I'm gonna use my DeWalt driver to do this. So let's get started. I'm pulling this down and we'll walk you through it step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this frame because this is what's holding the fan in place. And that just comes out. So you've got your frame. See that? Be mindful of how it comes out because when you um, put it back in, you're going to want it to be in the same orientation. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the screen off so we can get to the screws that are holding the, the fan in place. And in fact, they did such a piss poor job of doing it in this one, the only thing that's holding this fan in is the, the handle for opening the vent hood. All right, so let's, let's change that out. These are just on snaps. Just remove these snaps right here, pull her down, just like that. All right, and then that just snaps down. We're taking this whole, whole thing out anyway. So we've got the switch here. This is the power, the black is the power. And this is our switch. He does not want to come disattached. Eh. Whew, that dude's on there. More than one way to skin a cat. There we go. All right. This frame is going to come out. We won't need that. 
So the next thing that we have to do is we have to take this fan out. Now this is pop riveted on here. So because it is, I'm going to go get just a flathead screwdriver and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pry this away from that bar because this can't be in here. It, it has to come out. So the white, we're going to double check this, but the white on this is more than likely the neutral or the negative side of your DC connection. It will probably match, but we're going to do that. So you want to leave yourself enough room here. You can see I left enough room to be able to splice into this for the hot side or the positive side. And then you wouldn't want to cut it here, right there. You're going to want to cut it back here. Give yourself plenty of room. Boop. Just like that. All right. So give me just a second. I'm going to go get a screwdriver to pry the crap out of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just to verify that I've got my voltage right, I'm going to double check to make sure I've got it set here where it needs to be set, right there. And then I'm going to double check this to make sure I've got the right polarity. Yep, positive 13.7. If I reverse these, it would say negative. So this is the right way. That means that your blue is your power, your white is your ground, or your neutral, it should be. So we're just double checking. I kind of figured that was the case. Nevertheless, never is a bad idea to double check that action. Angle nips, snips, pliers, and a screwdriver. In essence, we're just gonna abuse this thing until it comes out is what we're going to do. Just kind of try to pry those rivets loose is what I did before. They will eventually, if you work them enough, they will, they will pop out. And we don't need to worry too much about the integrity of this aluminum bar. I mean, you don't want to bend it too much because your, your lift is, is hooked to it, but if we are just patient and kind of work it, it'll come off. You could also, another trick that you could do, and in fact, I'm leaning that direction right now, is you could, you could take a, a drill bit and you could drill that right out the center. We'll see if that's good enough. Big head alert. Yeah, all right. Big head alert. I have all right, let's see if that weakened it enough. And it'll pry off. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Yep. A couple of holes in it. Get rid of this garbage. We're going to put a real fan in, like for a real man. Real man, real fan. So, if you watch my videos, you know how fond I am of butt splices. Now is our opportunity to put in another butt splice. I love butt splices. Nice. This is a vent line fan. This is a hang, hang line or hang or whatever it is. Um, we're going to use the hang. Uh, this is this this will this will go in and insert into any um, any of these type. So they do make this right here. If you want to come in here, they make this so that it's universal. This is going to have to be moved back. If you look here, can you get in there with the camera? You can unscrew from this side on the underside here, and you can actually move this back to here. In order for this to fit and hit our, our, uh, our lift knob, this is going to have to move back to here. We're going to have to move this back. So we're going to do that real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these out so we can move that back. At least that's my theory. Let's 
first check. This is if I was right. All right. The next thing is splice it together. So butt butt splicing. Splices. I love a good butt splice. And he can't deny it. I forgot the rest. Okay. But this is not. This is the butt splicing? Yeah, butt splice together. They provide you with enough screws to actually be able to get it in. Right, so what you want to do is when you're doing this, you want to make dang sure that you tuck your wires away, away from your, your fan blade. You don't want your fan blade sucking your wires up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route the wires along the side here like that, and you get up in there and see that. So we're gonna route them around, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna route them around here, like this, into that general area there. Probably might be a good idea to zip tie them together, but let's just tuck them in there, see if that works for our purposes. That's where they need to be anyway. All right, shoving those back there, back into there. And then up in this aluminum frame up here, there are two holes where you can put sheet metal screws to line this dude up. And All right, so they gave us this nice new knob. It's much bigger. I love that. Hard to film in these small spaces. It's kind of hilarious. I'm in the shower. <laughs> Let's put our fan knob back on. See how that works out for us. Yeah, it can be a little tight. But... All right, so that's open. You see that, Joel? Yeah. Open. Pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of nice. It, it does come off if you need to clean it. You're going to need to clean that screen. There's no doubt. And so let's put it up there the right way. There we go. Let's give it a test. So we've got reverse. That's blowing in. So reverse is going to blow it in. Bring in cool air. And the that is the out. So that's wonderful. So that's sucking the air out. You have three speeds. High, medium, low. So now what we can do is actually open up this window here also, and this one's a tricky one. This window here, and what's going to happen is that those fans are actually going to pull air through our camper. So we get a nice breeze, fresh air coming through. Seems good. Well. That's our video on today's installation tip, or at least a way that you can save some money. You know, as we're getting ready to go out on the road, one of the things that we're trying to do is, in the most cost-effective way, as we're preparing to live on the road, uh, is figure out a way to help us to stay comfortable. So in sharing this, what we're hoping through our Living With Rob experience, that you uh, are able to maybe modify your system, should you want to, uh, in a way that you can save some money, not having to run your air conditioning, but uh, my experience has been with these max air type fans that they move a significant amount of air, so much so that uh, oftentimes where you might need air conditioning, you can save yourself the energy and run these fans. The draw on these fans is next to nothing. Uh, actually, um, from what I was doing some research upon, uh, the draw on these fans is actually less than these factory installed little $12 knobs here that uh, 
really aren't efficient, not compared to that. So in our camper here in this Winnebago Micro Mini uh, 2108 DS FLX series, those fans are right on top of each other. So it's gonna double the pull through capacity uh, as, we're, as we're sleeping, because our window's up by the bed there, we'll be able to crack those and pull a ton of air across the entire depth of the camper. And I think that that's really, really great. Yeah. Uh, Joelle doesn't get too, yeah. too hot. She's a Florida native, so. I am. Hey, thanks for watching. We appreciate you. We're glad that you're here. If you found this video helpful, we'd love to have you hit the like button. We'd love to have you as a subscriber if you're not already. Follow us on our adventures living across the country. You might find some helpful tips. Plus, maybe you'll be inspired as you watch us go through all of the different challenges that we're going through and how we're overcoming the various obstacles that we're overcoming. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below, wouldn't you? Yes. Joel always updates me when people comment. Hey, somebody commented about this. Right. Hey, somebody commented about that. So you, you help uh, keep her uh, excited. Yes. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Yeah. Well. All right. All right. Well, I'm Rob. Joel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks right. for stopping by. To help, I forgot. Hold on, Joel. <laughs> your circulation in your RV, right? Yep. Okay. okay. Do it. All right.